Devin Faraci with Badass Digest on Cinefix here in Park City, Utah for Sundance 2013. I'm joined now by filmmakers behind the documentary Anita, uh, Frida Mock and Lily Hayden. Uh, this is such an interesting documentary because uh, I remember the Anita Hill uh, business when, when it was first happening. Uh, and revisiting her today, uh, what is what is it that you really learned uh, from talking to Anita now? Well, I think you learn for the first time because she's never spoken about that, that experience then and now, right. where she is now, uh, on film. So it, it's a, an opportunity to really understand how she handled that event in which was nine hours of intense grilling about really graphic sexual matters right. and, and then be confronting an all-white male uh, judiciary committee who seemed often not to understand what she was talking about in terms of sexual harassment. Do you think that we have moved forward in terms of sexual harassment, in terms of not blaming the victim? Because that was one of the things that was happening. I, I, I feel a little cynical about where, where we stand today. Uh, yeah, I, at least on a public policy level, and, and in terms of language, I think we've gone further in that people can talk about that with those experiences. Right. And, and actually, there are in place, uh, people are aware of laws that you cannot discriminate in right. that way in, in a workplace environment. You know, we've been posing for, for, for a feature, often the music is a, a dynamic part of, of the scene and the moment. In a documentary, is, it is as much, a, what, 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 what is the purpose of music in a documentary? I think it serves the same purpose. I don't approach docs any different than I do a narrative. Um, I think that it's, the music is there to make you feel something when words are sort of tickling your brain. I'm there to tickle your heart in right. a way. Um, and uh, they're stories. It's a story. You still have to feel something. You still have to go from A to B. You still have to have a sense of, right. of you know, I mean, we're human beings. We like stories. So I approach them the same way. Frida, for a lot of people, uh, the Anita Hill uh, situation, the Anita Hill scandal, I guess, was, uh, there's a couple of phrases synonymous with it, long dong silver and pubic yeah. hair in a Coke can. Yeah. Uh, when people watch this documentary, uh, w people who only have that perspective, that, that's, that, that's, that, that sensationalized media perspective, what, what, what different perspective are they going to walk away with after watching the doc? they'll see that the who she was was lost, I felt. And so they'll learn more, of, they'll understand who she is and why she did what she did and where she came from. And that because she was perceived as a liar in terms of the public at that time, uh, you'll find from the film, uh, it's not asking one to prove or disprove anything, it's for you to understand who she is and to feel who she is. Right. Yeah. And uh, the journey of the 20 year journey you see in the film is an, uh, a ask the audience uh, to understand the story right. as a person. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Good luck with the film. I, I'm sure it's going to get picked up pretty quickly. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see it myself. I'm Devin Faraci. This is Badass Digest on Cinefix here in Park City, Utah for Sundance 2013. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single interview along the way. Uncle Al and impossibly Blaze, Jack and Pete, debate the aquatic movements of giant robots in Pacific Rim. There's only one reason Hollywood goes to Utah, Sundance. Gray Drake gives her best films from the not Butch Cassidy Film Festival. Ben Lyons reviews new movies, Grace Randolph recaps the Golden Globes, and Marlon Wayans stops by to talk about a haunted house. Devin Faraci is on location in Park City for everything badass that Sundance has to offer. Get your film fix. Subscribe to Cinefix.